My name is Daniel and welcome to Hiking and Survival in Japan. Um, today's is a very, very quick update. Okay, what's been going on? Um, so I haven't, sent, haven't put anything up for the last few days. I did go to Kyoto there the day before yesterday and I had filmed a whole lot of stuff on the way up and edited the whole video, got it all ready to go up onto YouTube and out of my own fault, not paying attention, I deleted a lot of it. Everything was gone and it was all wasted and um, I got it just was never meant to be published. Okay, so there was a video coming out, but unfortunately, out of my own stupidity, I lost it. But what's been going on in the meantime in the last few days? Well, lots of things have happened. Um, first of all, the Japanese government has changed its mind again on the crackdown here in Japan. They've now put the emergency advisory to basically all prefectures here in Japan starting from yesterday which is kind of a bit late because now they've only really got like two two and a half weeks of supposedly self quarantining to be done um where ourselves and osaka have had it for the last two weeks which means we get kind of over a month to do it um but there you go, that's that one. Then they had originally then planned that they were going to send out 300,000 yen um, to needed households who have low incomes and stuff like that. But the problem with that was that um, basically they couldn't guarantee that everyone who needed the money would get the money. So they have decided instead that they are going to send um, basically a hundred thousand yen to every Japanese person or everyone, any resident living in Japan. So that's going to be a big difference on that one. Um, outside that, um, this morning I got a message from Kobe City Government advising me not to go out this weekend and to stay at home um, as we've had an increase, increase in infections in the area and a lot of them cannot be traced back to the source which means that somebody's coming into the area infecting people and then leaving again so they can't track it down or people are travelling off to other places and bringing it back with them so they can't figure out where it's coming from and that's a big problem. Um, as you've seen, uh, we had um, very heavy rain here last night. I mean, really torrential rain. Um, and so this park is actually sobbing wet. Um, it's actually sand in the, in the park just there, uh, which soaks up a lot of the water very quickly. But there's still water patches. But as you've seen, already there is two old people. There's a guy there in blue doing his stretches. And there's a little lady in white just walking around. And they're getting their morning exercise and they uh, can say they're keeping their social distance between each other and she has a mask on he doesn't um but that's the problem um social distancing it's not happening here in japan um i could have taken lots of photographs yesterday just from my balcony of different groups of people and housewives and everything i'm standing in little clusters chatting to each other about what they're doing with their kids and all the other shit that's going on in the world at the moment and basically, you know, four or five of them would have masks on and then somebody wouldn't have a mask on. And you kind of go to yourself like, who's infecting who? And you're going to get infected and then bring that home to your family and your kids. And what the hell, you know? Um, so it's kind of strange then getting the message this morning from Kobe City government. Um, we get emergency messages sent to our phones. Um, they do have a speaker system as well for uh, national disasters but um, they also then have a system which was set up during the same time for sending out disaster information to everybody in the area once you're signed up for it and as I'm a resident I'd signed up for it so I got this message this morning to warn me to s advise me to stay at home this weekend and not to travel out and to not go around um, but this was something I was talking to my wife about, that if you think about years ago, if there was a lot of drunk driving going on, suddenly there was anti-drunk driving. Yeah, you know, there was drunk driving campaign on TV to warn people not to drink and drive. And this is usually done by the road safety organization and, and the government, um, you know. Um, here we are in a pandemic. 
and I haven't seen one piece of government advertisement telling people what to do and what not to do to keep them safe. And I find this very strange. Now, maybe things have just changed in all these years and um, I'm out of touch with what's going on in the world, but I just feel that this is um, something that all governments should be doing. I don't know what's happening in your countries. Please put in the comments box below if your country is actually doing anything to advise people what to do and what not to do besides having some TV presenter saying, remember, wash your hands. Because um, I know here in Japan, NHK News um, have been the biggest source of information for me. They have been really honest. Um, they've been saying things that the government haven't even been saying. They've been even getting at the government for not being as uh, on the ball for this as they should be. And they're the ones who've been going out of the way and showing the right and wrong ways to put on masks and the right and wrong way to wash your hands and talking about social distancing and everything else. But nobody else seems to be doing it. Um, then again, on TV it doesn't help itself. When you Here in Japan we don't have lots of dramas, um, TV dramas and stuff like that. What we end up having is lots of game shows and discussion groups. And they haven't changed. They're all still sitting beside each other. There is no social distancing in the TV studio. And I don't think that because of this, they're not, the information is not filtering into people's houses as much as it should be. Okay. Um, where what they are doing, like they showed a documentary last night about um, a hospital that they made back in 2014 about the doctors and nurses and how they're dealing just with day to day doing the night shifts and they had gone into great pains to actually put on the screen that this was filmed in 2014 before the coronavirus um, and that they were going to go back to see how they're going now but of course they can't because the hospitals basically inundated with patients so they can't really go in so they ended up doing a quick video conference with one of the doctors to see how they're doing um, but that's the closest thing I've ever seen to doing it about it, you know. Of course, there's the constant news reports that's just pouring in everyone's, you know, TV station um, about the death tolls and who, how many's been infected and the, the, the rise in Tokyo and then Osaka and everywhere else. And it can become quite depressing. I must admit, now it can kind of become depressing. Um, I've kind of gone to the point now where I will have a day of listening to it all and then I'll have maybe a day or two of not listening to any of it um, just to give myself some space because if you're going to be listening to this every single day you can come become quite depressed okay and um, you don't need that when you're stuck in with your family and you don't need to be bombarding your children with this as well okay and so this is where we're coming down to what are you doing in your family at the moment we're here in the house we have been doing a few things to keep yourself active over the last few days we've been re-home decorating and ordering online um, the flat pack stuff that we've been saying we've been buying for the last few years but finally getting around to doing it and so my kids and i have been building all these pieces of furniture for the house which is keeping us going um it keeps the kids minds occupied on something else and some fun things to do um, so that's one thing that we've been doing um, and the other thing then is just trying to take the kids minds off stuff by um, keeping them educated to keep them to do their school work even if you're here at home and then when we can to get out for a bike ride um, bike rides are kind of great they even found this in New York and other places now because it's something you can do as an individual you're not actually kind of like in close contact with somebody um, and you get a bit of exercise, but as uh, even as I was watching Adam Savage there the other day, and his he was saying that he cycles a lot now with his wife. He wears a mask when he's cycling. I do the same thing because I don't know who the person in front of me is, and don't know who's behind me. And if I'm heavy breathing out, as he said, like this jet stream of water particles coming from your mouth as you're breathing heavily in and out while cycling is not good for anybody else or for yourself so yeah wear a mask when you're cycling if you can okay 
But there we go, we're going again off track here now. Um, but that's really everything that's happening here in Japan. The people are still, more people are getting infected and so on. Um, as I said, I'm going to keep this short because I'm going to Babylon now and they got nothing really much to say today, to be honest, which is, um, as I said, the weather's been kind of foul yesterday and hay fever is out and so my nose is going nuts and I'm sneezing a lot and my eyes are at me. But otherwise, everything is okay. I hope everything's okay in your end. Keep up your good spirits. Try to do some fun activities. Get out those jigsaw puzzles that you thought you'd never finish to find out that you've missed place some parts yeah anyway and uh, try to have some fun but until the next video please remember be prepared and we'll see you all on the flip side